Good morning, lovely people. How are you doing on this lovely day? Uh, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva, and this is your Yoga Solutions Live on this Tuesday, the 3rd of September. Is that right? Yes, it is. Hope you're having a fantastic time wherever you are. And um, yeah, today we're going to have a look at King Pigeon. It's a long awaited question from, from my friend Jennifer in the States. Um, she's been doing some online courses and things and she came up with a question a while ago and I um, had a tech fail on that week so <laughs> so I think I came up with some good stuff but uh, none of it was logged so I had to de delete the um, or well, none of the audio worked I think so I had to delete the video so here we go have another go today um, I haven't practiced yet today so I, I need a little moment to just sort of tune in and turn up and um, yes, yeah, so uh, I just I don't know, catch up and see how I'm doing, how, how, and let you know where I'm at. So uh, yes, it's a lovely day. Uh, I'm 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 liking it. It was a bit too hot for me recently. Uh, the that last week, uh, those weeks in August when it got up to thirty, it was lovely. But it's um, and if I was in Spain, I'd be happy with it. But <laughs> but it being in in the UK, it felt a bit strange. But I had an amazing time over the summer um, with the um, Garden Yoga week, week and weekends, um, various festivals, World Yoga festivals. Fantastic to meet all the swamis and um, and exhale. Of course, was wonderful and uh, with Carl uh, playing his music and uh, all the lovely all, all the lovely people that turn up there, the pioneers basically. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. So I had a had a great time um, this summer. I'm just getting this set up, um, and yeah, but I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to kicking off things for the autumn, and um, yeah, that that uh, starts pretty soon. I've got one weekend off. I'm going to take a mini retreat, so I'm, so that I can sort of get deep into my practice again, as well as uh, finish off the trims on this building. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, let's get on with the yoga. Okay, so. Got a little bit of a season change cold going on, so excuse if I sniff or um, sound a bit bunged up. Okay, King Pigeon, let's see. Uh, well, it, it, it actually goes quite well with the um, Yoga Solutions live broadcast I did last week um, around how to re uh, release the psoas muscle because that's kind of uh, the problem in King Pigeon. When, when uh, if, if you don't know the posture, it's um, where people uh, where you sort of fold a leg forwards, take a leg back, and then you um, you come up into extension. Uh, I, I won't do what norm people normally do because it would hurt my back. And the uh, the reason <laughs> being, um, if you do the normal sort of version of posture, um, we tend to we tend to collapse into it. And when, when you collapse into it, you jackknife in the front leg hip. Um, I, I, really, I won't show it, but it, we tend to get heavy in the front leg hip, which makes us lift in the lumbar spine. And there's a, there's a fundamentally a cutoff between um, upper and lower bodies where you're sort of basically the, the psoas, mus psoas muscle is locked in extension. And holding you up in extension as opposed to being released. Um, so, how to get past that, and and that leads to the the outcome that um, Jennifer was saying. Um, now, where, where, where's the question now? Oh, good morning, everyone. Just looking at the um, list of people who turned up. So, yeah, the question was around uh, the uh, king pigeon and protecting the pelvic floor. So if, if you have that sort of jackknifing collapse in, in the front leg hip and the, the only solution is to sort of um, lift with your lumbar spine or push back against, against the thing in order to come up, then what happens is the whole of the core of the body um, uh, collapses. It collapses forwards underneath the, underneath the sort of uh, separation from support. The lumbar spine does all the work to lift you, and then the core of the body collapses forwards, which causes a downward pressure upon the um, pelvic floor. And, and it's that 
experience that leads people to the idea that they have to hold tension in their pelvic floor to keep everything together. And um, it, it's a it's a whole paradigm uh, shift when when you understand that basically instead of half holding tension in your pelvic floor at all times, which is the usual way of thinking of things, um, you know, make it stronger. Instead of that, there's a there's there's a far better um, way of dealing with things. One second, I'm going to set my timer because I know my microphone switches off every twenty minutes or so. So I'm going to set it so that it doesn't do that. Well, so so I, I'm reminded to switch on again. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Yes, when when you jackknife in the hips, when you're holding yourself up with your size muscle, um, basically uh, either way, you know, uh, people hold this cells up with the size muscle either either this way or that way. Um, when when you when you do it with a tuck under the pelvis, you're you're um, tensing one end of it, and when you do it with the lift of the lumbar spine, you're doing it with the other end of it. Um, <clears throat> so what was I saying? Yes, uh, when you when you hold tension with the pelvic uh, with with the psoas muscle, there's a kind of an automatic um, reaction around the pelvic floor that goes together, uh, where the pelvic floor becomes tense. So people and um, and it's sort of a na the body's natural way of protecting things because you've basically caused a situation where where there is a downward pressure against the pelvic floor. Now, if if you can. Um, there's a paradigm shift with this where you can change your mind. Basically, instead of getting strong in the pelvic floor in order to kind of retain your contents, which is the general idea of things, if you think of the body as a fluid system, then what we need is to have less pressure, less vertical pressure, vertically down pressure um, on the pelvic floor. And the way that happens is when breathing is functional, as in it's whole body breathing. The reason being that when you release the breath, uh, whatever the situation in gravity, if you have support, basically, and uh, then the diaphragm works appropriately, and and it works to breathing, which is has the has a certain amount of downward pressure, but there's also ribs involved with that, so there's not too much downward pressure. You know, the ribs widen as much as the diaphragm descends, and uh, people think it's just the diaphragm going going getting tight and then coming up. It's not. It's, it's the whole mechanism. The whole body breathes to allow the diaphragm to descend so that you don't overly, um, you don't give too much downward pressure to the pelvic floor. And then when, when, when the release of the breath happens, then because of that, as well as the ribs, the, the ribs sort of resting inwards and allows the diaphragm to ascend in a relaxed kind of state. Um, when the rib cage is not involved, then uh, then we tend to have a collapsed chest response to the outbreath, which continues the downward pressure. Whereas um, if you have a whole body breath, then the release, uh, then its release allows the diaphragm to ascend, which takes the pressure off the pelvic floor. So I'm being very technical again this this week. Um, it's um, Yes, much more so than I am usually, because it's uh, we're not doing stuff to our diaphragms, we're not doing stuff to our psoas muscle, we're not trying to do anything to our pelvic floor. But um, if if you've got the feeling that the pelvic floor needs protecting, then you need to work in a way that means that that's not no longer necessary, rather than making the pelvic floor tight, because that's um, that's essentially a fear response to breathing. You know, if you don't feel supported, you'll tighten the pelvic floor. And tightening the pelvic floor for any length of time will make you feel unsupported because you have to go around holding yourself together there. So, um, <laughs> long winded answer to a very simple question. Um, um, not a simple question, um, very long winded answer to a statement within a question that presumes that the pelvic floor needs supporting. And what we need to do is not give the pelvic floor reason to, to feel that need to contract and hold. Okay? So anyway, I hope, hope that makes some sort of sense for those of you that like like the um, anatomy side of things. Um, now to get on with King Pigeon, if you want to join me. Oh, actually, yeah, let's start lying on our backs. I've talked for a long time. We won't spend too long. 
um, we lie on our backs just to get the idea of what a a because we're going to be in extension in King Pigeon, and it's important to understand that you don't have to have a tight sales muscle um, when ex in extension. So if you line line your backs, put your feet on the floor, quite close to your bum, grab hold of your thighs near the groins, and uh, push your legs away from you so that you are pushed away from your legs with a total relaxation around the legs. So they they'll probably fall out to some degree but if you're pushing hard enough uh, then they won't fall to the ground instead you'll start to extend away from your legs with a sense of um, release along the front of the spine so we start to elongate the organs as well as relax the size muscle and uh, that feeling of spaciousness is an important part of how we're going to come up when we are in king pigeon you know when we're in the king pigeon shape um, the feeling of the belly emptying space between the thigh bones and the pelvis in the groins um, and the elongation along the front of the spine that it isn't necessarily a shortening along the back of it okay so just spend a few moments because this will take time releasing tension if, if you're used to flattening your back then you'll be pushing with your arms and tilting the pelvis to inverted commas protect your back I need you to let that go if possible um, the feeling when you're doing that is that there's a, a crunching the belly muscles you're using the belly muscles to prevent movement so if you can let that go let the belly muscles go let the the space along the front of the spine elongate as you breathe and as you release the breath and, and because of the use of the arms to create that space, um, the ribs are more likely to be broadening with the in-breath. And provided you don't try and flatten your neck, then that this won't be a strain on the bump. Of the, it won't be a strain on the neck. If you flatten it, you, you start to pull on the spine. So it's it's like presenting your throat to space or presenting your heart to space. So there'll be a broadening of the breath across the lungs and the rib cage, and as you release the breath with that effortful support uh, of yourself away from your legs there will be an emptying, a gathering in that allows that length to stay with you Okay, and uh, that last part, when, when you can work out how to empty the breath so in this position it, it can all be passive, you know, it's just the, the release of pressure that allows the belly to empty, but if you can follow that up with a little bit of uh, physical gathering of the abdominal muscles around it and it's a sideways action more than a, um, um, a sort of crunching feeling it's a gathering in towards the center feeling then you get used to how you actually support yourself uh, from within when you're in extension it's not about holding extension in the spine and, and holding the belly back it's just the the belly emptying as a result of the breath and when it's related to um, support then <clears throat> those muscles work a bit harder harder you see and the release of the breath and support are meant to go together <coughs> excuse me so let's um, let's try it in this position so you, you start with um, with kneeling I'm going to take the t-shirt off so you can see what goes on in my core because um, <clears throat> it's kind of key to whether the, whether the the thing is functional or not. So, in order to get that spaciousness relating to your touch, you can start in a sort of kneeling position and just notice that if you uh, press vertically down through your hands, which is um, well, down is down. It's not it's not leaning on your hands and pushing away. It's the act of touching. It's the downward action. If you press vertically down through your hands, it tends to be more of a dragging towards you feeling. And the result is that you can relax your back, and instead of the back collapsing, the belly sucks up to meet it. Um, if you're holding your belly in your back, then you'll be holding that with your with your uh, hamstrings, holding the pelvis, essentially. In that, so you're getting involved with holding things with a breathing mechanism. Um, <coughs> including the psoas muscle. So if you can relax that, let your legs fall back, then most people would go into sagging. But then if you use your hands in a down and towards you feeling, then that can lead to core support. 
Um, and because of position in space, so you're the other way around, you should feel that the belly muscles work more firmly in response to that. <coughs> Pardon me. And then uh, what we can do is we can bring a knee forwards. And ideally, uh, when we're doing King Pigeon, um, we want the knee, the, the front leg, to be at 90 degrees. That's the that's the sort of um, 90 degrees to the, to the mat. That's the sort of um, ultimate goal. Um, all the way back to underneath your hip is just avoiding using, it's, it's just avoiding the support basically. So you end up leaning against your hip. So, you know, if I, if I have the foot too close to the middle, all I'm doing is jackknifing, le leaning my weight on the hip whilst I fold the knee. Um, <clears throat> if you have the foreleg at um, an angle, then that external external rotation of the thigh, and if you put if you put a hand on one foot to sort of uh, lock that in in place, so if you put a hand on the foot to lock that in place, you see, then the other hand can go on the out, outer thigh. <laughs> I keep having to swap sides so I can show you. Um, one hand on the foot. The other hand on the outer thigh to help that outer thigh externally rotate and what that gives you is a way of being supported by the front leg the leg is the is the foreleg it's not it's not the thigh you get supported by the front leg and then by um as you settle as you allow the um pelvis to settle i don't know and you, you'll need purchase from the back toe so that the knee can come up every now and again okay so you can reorganize things as you allow the pelvis to settle away from you with that then you get a similar sensation just swap sides so you can see you get a similar sensation of the the lengthening along the front of the spine let's turn you turn myself this way a bit so you can see what goes on in the core can you see I don't know if I'll get this out of the way, I get a similar sort of sensation of the lengthening away from your base up along the front of the spine. Let's um, make myself a little less close up so I'm not cut off by the top of the thing. Um, hang on a sec. Technology, I need to just adjust this. Here we go. And then, there we go. Right, <clears throat> so where was I? Yes, so one hand on the foot, one hand on the thigh with a with a hand pointing outward so you can externally rotate. Support yourself away from the ground with the arms so that, with a push, so that you don't have to collapse into your lumbers. Instead, you're supported by your arms, you see. Let's um, turn it a bit more forwards so you can see what's going on. Okay, and then with, with that going on, um, if you join in with the core of the body, you draw back and draw up, and that gives you somewhere to rest the spine down from, and occasionally coming onto the back toes to allow things to adjust. And, and what you're doing is you're sustaining a spaciousness. You're, um, <clears throat> you're, you're not sort of jackknifing at the hip, you're not collapsing the lumbar spine, although the lumbar spine can relax, and the rest of your spine starts to um, join in with extension as you let go of the, allow the front of the spine to elongate, the space along the front of the spine. And the rest of you gets involved with extension as a result, little by little. And um, each, every time you release a bit more length along the front of the spine. It's more about the behind the heart. The, the extension comes from behind the heart. So the way you use your arms, if, if you're just pushing down, then that prevents extension. It's a forced uh, flexion thing, which is great for your hips, um, but not so nice for your neck and upper back. If you want the upper spine to extend, then from the use of the hands, it is down. You widen, you pull wide, and then through that width, the upper spine, the heart can shine through, you see, as long as you've got the length along the front and uh, the drawing up helps that happen. 
And uh, <clears throat> like all, all uh, physical actions, there's an equal and opposite um, response. Okay. So if you draw back and up in the core of the body, then the weight tends to go down, away from that. And it's through your hands, but it can also be through your base. <clears throat> At the moment, we, we've got a sort of passive base where we're resting through our touch. So we're not actually supporting ourselves from our base. So if you want to really feel supported by this, I would wait until you get it a little bit closer to the ground. It's kind of nicer, it's easier to do if the thigh gets to the ground. But if it doesn't, I would just leave the arms in place. And it might take a month month of Sundays for you to get there. And that's fine, because the body is slowly accommodating what you need, um, as long as it comes from the whole extension of the spine. Ah, it's my reminder to check my microphone. Pardon me. <clears throat> Yep, so that should be working. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, if, if the thigh at any point gets to the ground or gets close to it, all what you could do is get a block to prop it up. So I'll do that now so I can show. And it's important that you, when you use these props, you don't use them think, um, as um, that's the way you do the posture. It's, it's basically, if you understand what you're doing it for, then it's useful. So all I've got is a, I've got a, a block ready underneath my um, uh, left thigh with this external rotation going on with the, with the ever-developing space in the core of the body so that, so that the thigh drops away from me. I don't drop heavily onto the block because that's that would dissociate me from the from what I'm trying to do so little by little as the spine allows the pelvis to drop away from the heart and I arrive in a place where probably could have done with two blocks but um Yes, okay, I'm starting to be able to relax into my base. Now that I can relax into my base, it becomes possible to use my base. And the use of the base is to engage with your touch. So um, the thing that will probably evade me is this front foot, because when I, when I take my hand off, it tends to pop in like this. So I'm gonna leave, my, I'm gonna leave one hand on the foot and see if I can use that foot to support myself away from the ground and when I press through that foot I'll get a core response I'm going to see if I can use that underneath hip to support myself away from the ground so I'm going to get another block just to make life easier because I'm not there yet so uh, you know I've not actually tried this posture for, um, to, to see if this theory is correct. But the, the general, general idea is you want to feel spa supported, so you start with the hands. You want to feel spacious, so you allow your support to develop that space along the front of the spine. And uh, there's a meeting of space that helps me find that. And then eventually I want to be able to rest into my touch, which includes that underneath thigh, as well as the front leg, foot. And the result wants to be the support in the upward direction. Um, if I engage with that touch by making it equal, so clearly the front knee has got more contact than the foot. So if I engage with the foot, I get more support. Um, the back knee needs to support me. The back foot needs to support me until I can drop through my base into that touch and release away from the ground as a result. So it gets more and more relaxing. And provided that they, we're not sort of pulling on joints, we're not trying to make the pelvis heavy, we're actually trying to remain supported little by little um, by all points of contact, including the back foot and knee, and little by little our base becomes the, the source of our support. The downward touch of the base becomes the source of our support. I didn't demonstrate that very well, but um, it gives you the idea. Um, yeah, that was quite intense. So I think it's probably near time it is. 
and so uh, I'll leave you to do the other side there we go I'm just going to have a little lie on my back because that was quite hard work just to uh, do something for the other side bit of space a quick go uh, come to all fours allow the touch of the hands to cause space in the belly oh it's the other leg isn't it bring the other leg forwards support myself one hand on the foot one hand on the thigh support myself away from the leg so that I can release tension along the front of the spine then little by little I can allow the pelvis to drop away from me as the upper spine comes through to allow the extension into movement oh, it might have been the, the other side I think I was doing it for too long basically so the body started complaining about it this side is because uh, I've only just done it for a second um, it, <clears throat> it, it, that's, that's the thing with this work is when you're creating conditions for change, if it takes a long time, it's exhausting. So you don't ever get to sort of experience the um, the arrival. But uh, once you get familiar with creating the right conditions, then um, you can make little adjustments, as you notice, where you start to get to relax into the outcome. Okay, so that'll do. King Pigeon in as much of a nutshell as I can <laughs> muster and I hope that was useful for you um, a little little something about uh, what I've got going on let's uh, let's open this up um, uh, let's see yeah so uh, yeah what, what's happening in terms of uh, workshops and whatnot I'm, I'm gonna be I'm launching online yoga classes very soon I'm actually doing it today for um, my regular Aquaviva course students and um, yes uh, but uh, yeah I, I, I'm gonna use use the current ones over September probably just to um, get familiar with uh, the format and um, uh, let's see um, oh, oh no, anyway, I'll, 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 try and I'll try and remember what I've got going on. So um, yeah, I'm gonna. So I've got uh, online classes um, beginning soon. Pr yeah, probably October, I think. I, I want to have a month of it with my um, course students just to get familiar with it. And uh, there's two sessions. There's one soon after this one. They're, they're 90 minute sessions. They're uh, proper classes, and there's a bit of time for interactive um, sort of chat I suppose uh, where, where question and answers basically so um, so that uh, the classes are set to um, whatever the participants actually need which is uh, always a good thing um, and uh, there's two of them there's one, one at 11 30 a.m. on a Tuesday British time and one at 6 30 p.m. British time and the, uh, one of the reasons I put it put a second one on in the evening is so that people that work can get to it and also so that uh, people in different time zones can get to it so if if this is of interest then PM me um, the, the details are not up on the website yet because I'm in the throes of reinventing the website so it's a bit clearer and simpler which shows exactly what we have on offer um, so that, that that's starting very soon if you're if you're really really keen then um, I might I might let you join this month but um, otherwise, it'll it'll be officially starting in October, I think. Uh, oh, and uh, yeah, if you want to see what online with me is like, there's some pre-recorded courses you can get for very cheap. Um, Six-week courses, embodied living, embodied yoga for embodied living. They, they, it's it's really works for people. So um, um, go ahead and book one of those in the meantime if you if you're keen to see how it works. What else? Um, yeah. I'm, uh, uh, workshop wise I've got uh, the set I've got the autumn workshops coming and that's um, 15th Sunday 15th of September in Brighton uh, 
be kind, uh, radical ahimsa, be kind to your spine. It's a series of four that goes over the autumn. There's one September, October, November, and December. Uh, uh, one Sunday a month in Brighton, one Saturday a month in Glasgow. The one in Glasgow is twenty Saturday 21st, and then monthly thereafter uh, through to December. And basically what we're doing is we're opening up um, um, kind of the the course content to the public so that people can drop in for one day. And uh, so it's more of a casual affair. And th those that want to um, do go full on into the full immersion course process can join that in January next year when I start the year off as always with Pete Blackaby uh, kicking off two weekend workshops, one down in Brighton, one up in Scotland. Um, other than that, I have the occasional workshop um, and um, uh, around and about, I think in November, no, um, September the 29th, I'm thinking of going down to Yeovil. Uh, again, because I'm heading that way anyway, to do a workshop near my uh, cousin's place uh, in near Wing Canton. Those of you that were there last time, I hope uh, seem to really enjoy it. So I'm either going to do a workshop on Sunday the 29th in Yeovil, or if I get a few people inquiring about one to ones, I may do a day of one to ones at um, at Alison's studio. Um, in Wing Canton, at the Wing Canton Chiropractic on the Monday. Get in touch if you're interested. Um, PM me, because uh, that's a, an ad hoc thing. It won't happen unless I get inquiries. Um, what else? Uh, I have workshops in Twickenham on the 3rd of November, Heart Twickenham, and uh, there's a campaign at the moment to get to, to keep Heart running because it's a it's a wonderful community center and uh, it needs to become one really so um the people that are organizing that are doing wonders to try and um keep the place running as a community center so i'll be doing that on the 3rd of november this year it's a sunday and it's uh, it's all, always about relationships and uh, again bring any question or any issue you want to deal with and then um, on, I think it's the 20 somethingth of November, it's a Friday and a Saturday. On Friday the, not September, November, um, on Friday the 22nd, I'll be in a, a village near Guildford uh, doing a workshop for uh, Louisa Bertwell's students at, um, uh, yes, in a, in a hall near, near Guildford. Uh, and Louisa Burtwell is uh, one of my alumni, um, uh, long-term students and teachers. Uh, she's doing wonders to spread the work there. And on Saturday the 23rd, there will be um, another one at Angering at Cindy Robbins' studio, who is also um, a long-term student and teacher, spreading this work. So um, that's this year. That's about it, really. That's all I have to say. Um, I think that covers things. Uh, I've enjoyed that. Um, thank you for the question, Jennifer, and um, I look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. I am Mark Jack Reva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, signing off from Yoga Solutions Live. Lots of love to you. Bye now.